What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, I have been in a D&D &D campaign for the past three years or so, something like that. And I just love this campaign. It's the first that I've ever actually played in, and it's just made me fall in love with the game completely. So much so that I've made a bunch of like the magical weapons and stuff that are in my campaign on this show. Like Lady Killer, my spider crossbow there. And also the Sword of the Depths, which is hanging on the wall behind me here. Links to how I made those things, by the way, in the description below if you wanted to check those out. Today, I'm gonna make another magical item from that campaign. In fact, it's related to the Sword of the Depths there. So in my campaign, there are these magical rings that have a primordial being stuck inside. The very specific ring that conjures up the Sword of the Depths there is called Wave. Now, as you might guess, it is a water themed wave. You know, it's a water elemental themed ring. Now my partner and DM for that campaign, Middle Miss Red, has been so kind to draw up some art of what this bad boy looks like. And using that art, I will pull it from the fantasy world and make it into a real thing for me to play with and have. But before we get in the bill, let me shout out my sponsor. It's me, it's me. Nobody else sponsors me, it's me. Seriously, if you like what I do here, hit me with some of that thumbs up love and do not forget to subscribe so you know I release new content. It really helps the channel out a lot if you like and sub. Uh, so yeah, if you do be the solid, I'd appreciate it. All right, without much further ado, let us make a primordial ring and level up this skill. Making a mold. All right, so to manufacture a ring that has these tumultuous waves and all that stuff going on inside it, I decided the best medium for that would be resin. Mostly because I've really have enjoyed using resin and it's the only thing I could think of that'll be like clear and you can see all the stuff going on inside of it like in the art. That being said, to cast something into resin, I need to make a mold to cast into. And to make that mold, I need to make like a prototype first. Steps to this thing. Now to make my prototype, I decided to use wood just because it's readily available, it's cheap, and it's really easy for me to mold. Now to get started on that, I needed to figure out how big the ring needed to be so it could fit on my meaty little finger here. Luckily, I already happen to have a ring on my meaty little fingers. That being said, it is the one ring I have and I had no idea what size my finger was. So to work this out and also isolate the tool I'll need to use, I busted out all these spade bits and just kind of tried them one at a time to see which one would kind of fit closest into my ring. And after a few, we got ding, 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 we have a match. We have like a perfect match. That three quarter inch spade fits my finger perfectly, apparently. My finger's about three quarter inches around. The more you know. And also a little FYI in case all of you want to get me like jewelry or Pose, I don't know, do you. Probably won't say yes. I mean, I'll, I'll take the ring. Cool, so now that I know what size that is, I use a compass to draw out the circle at exactly three quarter inches. This will just give me a shape I can use to start laying out my ring. And I was super happy with how perfectly my ring matched over this little circle here. All right, with that all laid out, I started drawing another circle around that one about a quarter of an inch wider. This is far too big for a ring, but at least it gives me something beefy to work with so I can kind of mill it and, and carve it and do all the things I need to do with it without worrying about it breaking right away. This is also the time where I laid out the whole wave feature, trying my best to copy the art that Middle Miss Red had made. Cool, with that all laid out, it was off to my drill press to start making the hole for my fingers to fit through. And again, I'm really happy with how perfectly this fit. Like, my finger fits right in there like it's made for it. Because, you know, I made it for it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm always so amazed when the things I make come out exactly like I made them to come out. But anyways, once that hole was in place, it was off to the bandsaw to start roughing out the rest of the ring. And again, I wasn't going for perfect cuts here, just trying to get the basic shape of the thing so I can start carving in any details. And with that all free from the rest of the wood, I tried it on my finger. And it was good, it's just way too thick at this point. Nothing that a visit to my belt Santa can't handle though. Using that, I just kind of trimmed the whole thing down and gave it this little bit of a wedge shape here. Uh, mostly because when you, when you close your fist, this little area is smaller than this area here, right? So I want it to be more comfortable inside my hand. So I made that area thinner. All right, so with that all roughed in, I wanted to go over to my Dremel and start adding in the wave features. I just kind of dropped in some lines and curves to make it more look like, like a rough wave, right? The thought being if I lay these in now, the mold will take that shape and I won't have to cut them into the plastic as much later. I also took this opportunity to round off all my sharp edges with some 200 grit sandpaper. And now that looks like a ring. 
Like, I'm honestly pretty proud of this little guy at this point. It looks like a ring, like something you get out of one of those little gabachons. That being said, the trouble with it is there's a lot of little nooks and crannies and grain lines in here that I don't want the mold to pick up. Luckily, plastic wood exists. This stuff is like magic. It can be sanded, drilled, it's strong, it dries really fast. And using it on my ring, I was able to get rid of all those little chips and sand it nice and smooth. Now my ring is beautiful and featureless and almost ready for the mold. One last thing needs to be done though, and that is to put on just copious amounts of polyurethane. Again, this is just gonna help to further smooth out any of those features and also cover in any of the pores so that the rubber I use for my mold doesn't get all inside of there and stick too much. Now the actual making of the mold itself is the easy part. For a frame for the whole thing, all I do is cut off the bottom of this little red Solo cup here. Give me this tiny little tray I can use to mold into. Now, the rubber I'm using for my mold is this Dragon Skin 10 Very Fast. It comes in a bunch of different varieties and each one has a different pot time, which is the time you have like to actually mess around with it, and cure time, which is the time it takes to actually get to a full cure. This bad boy has a pot time of four minutes and a set time of 10, so pretty quick. And it's super easy to use at a one-to-one -one ratio. All I have to do is make sure there's equal parts A to equal parts B, combine the two, and then mix them up together. Then I put my mixture into my little red solo cup frame here and push the ring into place. Now I needed to make sure that it was deep enough to cover as much of that little mountainous detail there as possible, but still open enough on the top so I can add in all my little swirls and stuff later on. And after about 10 minutes, it was ready to pop out. Unfortunately, my ring didn't make it, which is okay. It did its job admirably. I guess I could glue it back together if I really needed to do it again, but it did what I needed it to do. Now that seemed like a lot of little steps, but most of it was just making this ring, honestly, from start to finish, from going from just a block of wood to having a mold made of my ring, I'd say about two hours worth of work, not a bad investment. And with that mold, I'm gonna be able to make as many of these rings as I want to now. But with that, this step is done, and we can move on to casting the ring. Now for my forging of this mighty ring of power, I'm going to be using UV resin. I have a secret love affair with UV resin. It is so fast and easy to make something really, really cool with it. It also makes the die trick we're about to do much easier. Namely because I can kind of freeze it in time where if I used other resins where I've tried this dye trick, the dye has a tendency to sink down to the bottom as it cures and just doesn't come out the way I want it to. So if, if you know resin arts and you know how to make that happen with, with non-UV resins, uh, why don't you share it with me? That'd be great. But okay, here's how I was able to make this thing work. First, of course, I go ahead and fill my mold up with my UV resin. Now, I was trying to be as careful as possible to make sure there were no bubbles, but the good thing about UV resin is it doesn't set up until it gets UV rays. So you can just kind of let it sit for a little bit till all the bubbles have popped. Now, for my pigment, I have these nifty UV resin dyes here, specifically formulated for UV resin. And for this project, I'm using white and blue, because, you know, the ocean. All I did was add in some dots of the white in various locations, and then followed back up with some blue dots as well. Then I just went back in with a toothpick and started swirling them up into some interesting shapes and textures. Try not to mix them up too much because then you're just stirring the pigment into your resin, which is just gonna color the resin and you're not gonna see all the little swirls and interesting shapes. Once I was happy with the patterns I made, I just hit that sucker with my UV light to start curing. Another bonus with the dragon skin too is it's semi-translucent, which lets that light pass all the way through. The first time I tried a project like this, I used an opaque uh, mold and it did not work with the UV resin. You definitely need something that has some transparency to it. But about three minutes later, I was able to give birth to this beauty. Check that out, it is an exact copy of my little wooden ring, but it has all these really beautiful swirls and shapes and I love it, so cool. It does, however, have kind of a grainy texture to it because, you know, wood, you still get some of that. And also some sharp edges where it was kind of laying flat at the top. To get rid of those sharp edges, I just went back in with a Dremel and knocked those down as best as I could. While I had the Dremel out, I also added details of the wave area and let them kind of extend further down into the ring, almost so it looked like the, the water of the ring was getting turbulent as it went to the top there. Now to further hone this in and get rid of that kind of grainy texture, I started wet polishing. Basically just dunking that ring into some water and then using various grit sandpaper starting around 600 and working my way all the way up to 7,000. 
By the way, every time I've used these really higher grit sandpapers, I've had people ask me where I got them, so I left a link in the description below of the ones that I usually buy. But using this method, I was able to get this bad boy glassy smooth, and with this, you can really see the details inside. I love the clear resin with the white and the blue kind of swirls. It looks like water to me. I really like how that came out. I'm very impressed with it. All right, so at this point, we've got the cool ring shape down pat. It's time to start adding in some really nice details though. With that in mind, let's move on to wrapping the ring. Now in the image I'm going off of, you see how it has kind of a cool like feature that wraps around it and kind of comes up like a wave? The artist tells me that's meant to be like a wire wrap. That being said, because of the way wires work, uh, I didn't want to add too many strands because it would kind of look messy after a bit. So I decided to go for a little bit more of a simple shape with, I think, the same feel to it. Now to start with, I needed to keep my ring steady without marring it. Like I didn't want to put it into a vise or anything because I was afraid it would mark it up pretty bad. To get around this, I just busted out some of this blue tack and stuck it to my table. Then I pushed my ring into said blue tack. And this actually did a great job holding onto it without leaving any residue behind. Now to wrap it, I decided to use this 20 gauge wire. It has a nice shiny look and the larger size of the gauge is gonna make up for the fact that I don't have as many strands as in the original art. For the entirety of this project though, to shape it, I'm just using these round nose pliers. Using this, it's easy to make little loops and swirls just by wrapping it around one of the rounded jaws. And this led me to my first like major problem of this build. Off camera, I decided to test against a spare piece of little plastic that I had made with the resin to see how I'd get the wire to stick to it. To test it, I used this quick hold stuff, Gorilla Glue Super Glue, this stuff that's specifically made for like affixing beads to like glass and stuff. This E6000 plus stuff, which is made for jewelry as well. Nothing, nothing I used was a simple way to kind of affix this wire to this resin. Super glue just refused to stick, so didn't this uh, bead fix here. And these two kind of stuck, but I needed such little adhesive because I didn't want it to look like goopy and messy around it, um, that it just, it would fall right off after the fact. Finally, I had a stroke of genius. For UV resin, when exposed to UV light, cures like that. So I decided to use my UV resin as a glue. All I did was pour out a little bit in the bottom of an upside down cup and then used a pin to pick up small amounts at a time. Now I just position my wire where I want it and apply some of that resin lightly around it and feathering off into the ring so that it doesn't leave like a goopy line. Then I just hit it with some UV light to lock it into place. And that worked amazing. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna just give myself one of these. I'm very proud of myself for that little innovation there. And to those of you who use UV resin all the time, you're like, yeah, obviously, this is one of the ways you use it. I didn't know that, so I'm still proud of myself. Using this technique, I was able to just continue to kind of wrap the wire into cool shapes, add a little bit of that resin, and lock it into place as I go. And again, this is a really fun, cool trick because I was able to lay the wire down in ways that it wouldn't normally have stuck if I just kind of did a normal wrapping and instantly lock it into place with light, which is just cool to say. I, I locked it into place with the power of light. It is a magic ring, so. With this technique firmly in hand, I just kept adding in interesting flowy patterns. Once I felt like it would be a little bit too crowded if I added in any more of that 20 gauge wire, I was able to bust out some of this 26 gauge wire, just to add in some interesting little offshoots and fill in some space. And the end result is beautiful. I dig how that came out. I know it's different from the original design, but I like how kind of simple and almost tribal that little wave pattern looks. I think it looks delicate and cool and I, I'm, I'm into it. I like how that came out. Before I pat myself on the back too hard though, there was also the matter of, if, if you look at the picture here, there's like little gems on it that look like droplets of water, almost like the, it's leaking water or it's always wet. And I figured since I used the resin for everything else, let's give this a shot too. So to give it that water effect, I just mixed a little bit of blue with the remaining resin to get this kind of watery shade here. Then using a toothpick, I was able to add just a little droplet to the ring and cure it immediately. Doing this allowed it to keep that kind of beaded up shape. And I love how much this effect looks just like water and just came out super convincing. I'm very happy with that. Now for a finishing touch, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of white to the top of it to make it look like the breakers of the waves. To do that, I just put a little bit of white paint on my brush and wiped as much of it away as possible. 
Then I dry brush the top of the waves to give it just that little hint and highlight of white foam. And look at how dope this thing came out. I love this ring. I can 100% visualize seeing this in our campaign as we go on our mighty adventures. And look at, it fits, it fits like a, like a ring. It fits like a ring. This thing came out great. I'm so jazzed with how it is and it's just a, Another one of those things where it's like you play so long in these campaigns and you have these items that you surround yourself with while you're playing and to to snatch them from that imaginary world and now have a physical representation of it. I love that. I love making things so much fun. I hope you had fun. If you did, again, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Now I want to shout out a special thanks to my newest high tier level Patreon, Rachel Gerber. What's up, girl? Thank you. I appreciate you. It is because of you and people like you that we are able to do this fun stuff and make the show we're making. And using this, we've got bigger and better projects that are on deck here and I can't wait to do. So thank you so much for supporting this channel. I really appreciate you. If you like what we do here and like to see us do more, why don't you consider joining our Patreon too? Link in the description below. Now, if you'd like to see me cover anything special on this show, why don't you leave it in the comments and I'll add it to the list. All right, well, I should get going. There are, there are six of these rings and weapons that go along with them. Not only that, but our campaign's ending soon. I have much to do and very little time to do it in. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you.